Hi, I'm Michelle and this is Mishmash. Today I am doing the New York Times by the book tag. I have actually never done a tag on my channel before. There have been a couple of recent ones that I have been enjoying, namely this one and the t Intimidating TBR tag, which I'll probably be posting next. I figured because I'm moving soon, or I am moving as you watch this video because I'm pre-filming um, a couple of videos and I thought a tag would be a good one to pre-film. So, Let's get right into the questions. Okay, so the first question is what books are on your nightstand right now? And for me, I have three books on my nightstand right now. I don't usually have this many, but I just kind of selected a few from my bookshelf that I'm planning to read while I'm moving so I can pack up the rest of these boxes, which I'm hoping to do today, <laughs> um, and still have a few books. So I'll have these three to read and any books I get from the library. So right now I have My Brilliant Friend by Elena Ferrante. And this is what I'm currently reading. I just started it, but so far I'm finding it kind of interesting. Um, this is obviously the first book in the Neapolitan novels, translated from Italian, and it's kind of a family saga, I think. I also have The Tenant of Wildfell Hall by Anne Bronte. I just bought, um, I just love this vintage classic edition. And in case you haven't seen it, but they're pretty popular. <laughs> uh, this is what it looks like, the bunch of flaps. Same picture on the back. Um, this one's a chunker, so I figured if I am unable to unpack my boxes for a while, this one will hold me through. <laughs> and then also another book I recently got, and I have it in my haul video, um, this is Stern Men by Elizabeth Gilbert. This is a shorter book. A young woman who um, goes to her, back to her hometown in Maine and interacts with some fishermen there. That's kind of all I know about it. The second question is, what was the last truly great book that you've read? And that for me has to be The Interestings by Meg Wolitzer. This was just absolutely great. It hit me at exactly the right time when I was looking for something good to read and this was exactly what I wanted. This is a story of six um, teenagers who become friends at a gifted or a summer camp for gifted artist, artistic young kids, and then it follows them throughout um, to the age of like 60, and their ups and downs, their relationships, and I just thought it was so interesting, and I just, um, I don't know, it just captivated me. It was kind of a chunker, but I just absolutely loved it, so I really, I really recommend this to everybody. Okay, the third question is, if you could meet any author, dead or alive, who would you like to meet, and what would you like to ask them? I've met a couple authors in my life and I didn't really ever know what to say to them and I got kind of awkward and I'm not even really that awkward of a person or I don't mind awkward situations, but authors I never know what to say to them so I'm not really someone who would necessarily dream of seeing an author, I'd rather meet like an actor or a musician. But if I had to choose an author. I'm going to pick George Eliot because I've read a couple of her books, really enjoyed them, and I would just really like to ask her about why she chose to have a pen name that was a male name because I believe she was a contem contemporary of Jane Austen and Jane didn't have to choose a male name to, um, to be published under. And I just think it would be a really interesting conversation and to kind of show her that in the future women don't have to do that and that, that is... I don't know, give her some hope for the future of the world, I guess. I think that'd be really interesting. The fourth question is, what books might we be surprised to find on your shelves? So pretty much, if you were to look at my bookshelf, any book that would surprise you, I would say, well, that's my boyfriend's book. <laughs> he kind of has a little bit of a different taste, so our bookshelf is quite varied. He has a lot of, like, history books um, and political books. Uh, like The Art of War, which I'm not really planning to ever read, but um, as for my books, I thought this one might be a good option, or this one might be a good answer. This is Chris Hadfield's An Astronaut's Guide to Life. Uh, and this is a kind of memoir about Chris Hadfield. Um, he wrote this. Chris Hadfield is a Canadian astronaut who was the captain on the space shuttle for I think a year and it kind of follows his life from when he was a kid and decided he wanted to be an astronaut and the path that he took in order to become one and just kind of the thought process that 
um, astronauts have to have, like always asking why, always questioning things, always coming up with a um, backup plan, and what if the worst case scenario happens. And I really, really enjoyed this memoir. I found it really um, inspirational, and I am not like a scientific person, but I just absolutely love this. And Chris Hadfield is just a really um, amazing person. He's musical, he's funny, he's really engaging, and I think he's an amazing person. So I really liked this book. Oh, sorry, An Astronaut's Guide to Life on Earth. <laughs> that is the title of this. This question is, how do you organize your personal library? I'm about to move, so this might change, but um, right now we have fiction, nonfiction. The fiction is just alphabetical, alphabetical by author, and then the nonfiction is kind of by genre, like history, politics, um, art, and memoir biography, uh, and cookbooks. So that's pretty standard. <laughs> um, I'm thinking, because um, I'm really wanting to get a few collections, like the vintage classic editions and the Penguin English Library editions and I kind of want to group them together. I have several of these Penguin Clothbound editions and right now I don't have them together but I think if I had a few other collections that would look really nice to have all the collections together. The next question is what book have you always meant to read but never gone around to or anything that you're embarrassed and have not read? Um, there's a few books on my like want to read list that I could answer for that. Um, but as for books that I own that I'm embarrassed I haven't read, is probably The Sense and Sensibility by Pride and Prejudice <laughs> by Jane Austen. Sense and Sensibility by Jane Austen. I've read um, every other book of hers except Mansfield Park and this one. And this one just seems like um, everyone like usually starts with this one. And I've watched the movie a number of times and I really liked all of her other books so why haven't I gotten around to this one? I actually think I started it at one point when I was younger and just never finished it. So that one I'm kind of embarrassed to have not read. I really need to get around to that one. And then basically just any other classic I have, I've meant to get around to it for a while and just haven't. Another really good example of that is Casual Vacancy. I'm kind of embarrassed I haven't read this um, since obviously J.K. Rowling is the best and I never read any of her other books and I should support that as well. <laughs> So I just picked this one up, so I'm planning to read this one pretty soon. Uh, and then I'm really hoping to get to Cuckoo's Calling and that whole series as well. The next question is, what book do you feel like you were supposed to like but didn't? Which, for me, is definitely Catch-22 by Joseph Heller. Um, I have gotten halfway through this. This is my boyfriend's favorite book, and I told him I would read it, but I just struggled with it so much. This also answers the question, what was the last book that you put down without finishing? This might not be the last DNF I have, but this is definitely one that I really want to finish, but I just needed a break. Um, but I think now, having since read Slaughterhouse-Five and a couple other books in this genre, I think I might be able to enjoy it a little bit more. I think, um, I just find this really, really long, and like, I get the humor, I get what they're trying to say, I get what he's trying to say with this, but I just don't think I need to read, like, how many pages is this? I just don't think I need to read 500 pages of that. <laughs> and I just am finding it really annoying. But it is like a super classic. Also on Rory Gilmore's book list, so I really need to read this one. Um, but I, I think I'm getting, gearing myself up to finish this. And I know this is everyone's like favorite book, I just, question is what kind of stories are you drawn to slash what are you what do you stay clear of this is kind of a hard question for me to answer for some reason I really like to switch up my reading so I can't really think of like one exact trope or something that I really like I like to read a lot of different things so I, I can't really limit myself to one certain thing that I like to read I guess I just generally like stories about people that are different than me that go through different experiences that can learn lessons that I might not have the exact same opportunity to learn but can still apply to my life. And I just love when an author writes um, certain quirks about a character, uh, just things that make that person unique. I just absolutely love that. So when there's a real, um, really interesting characterization of someone, I think that's why I like stories about people's lives because you really get to know um, that character and what they're like and what they um, 
just little quirks about them. I, I really enjoy that. Um, the things that I like to stay clear of, I'm generally not really a big fan of magical realism. There's definitely been some books that I do enjoy it with, but generally I'm more of a real life, uh, real life or total fantasy. I like both of those, I just can't get behind magical realism for some reason. And I'm a little bit wary of World War II stories just because I've read so many that I feel like it can get a little bit tiresome, but there's definitely a few out there that I still want and need to read. The next question is, if you could require the president to read one book, what would that be? Um, I'm going to say Prime Minister for this in Canada, uh, Justin Trudeau. I think an interesting one that he's probably read, but um, I think it would be really good for him to read A House in the Sky by Amanda Lintout and Sarah Corbett. This is a, this is a really popular book in Canada, I think. Um, it's been on the Canadian bestsellers for years. Um, this is a memoir of a young woman from Alberta, where I'm from, who was a journalist and she was in Somalia. She went to Somalia and was kidnapped and taken hostage for over for about a year and a half. And this book is really, really sad, but also really hopeful. Uh, it's obviously a true story. It's her memoir, and she was eventually um, she was able to escape at the end. And now she is just kind of an um, amazing symbol of hope and courage. She is traveling the world, speaking to crowds about her experience and how hard that was for her. She was abused and taken advantage of in many ways. Um, but I think the reason that the Prime Minister should read this is because there was a fair bit to do with the government in this and how they weren't able to really help her escape. And I'm not really necessarily saying that they should have done more or they should have paid some ransom, but I just think that that is something important to be thinking about when you're in that kind of position and develop a stance on. So I just think anyone should actually read this book. It is so amazing and she's a wonderful person. The last question is, what do you plan to read next? And I kind of already answered that. That is my brilliant friend that I'm reading right now.